Hey everybody, welcome to Meta episode number 17. It is another Europe edition. You guys seem to like that a lot. And I've been wanting to talk to so many different European players, so many great guys out there, three of which join me today. And in fact, I even got a Terran player, so all you nerds on the forums can shut up. And let's go ahead, introduce these guys. First off, our Terran player, Bunny from the Copenhagen Wolves. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. I've been watching the past shows uh, a lot, so yeah, I'm ready to, to, to talk about stuff. <laughs> I hate him to say that. And then of course we have Snoot, how are you doing? Doing fine, thanks. It's a little bit cold here in Norway, but you know, we'll manage. <laughs> it's starting to get cold in Korea actually as well. I, I have to start wearing yeah. my jacket suddenly. It's... Oh well. And of course Mana, is it getting cold in Poland as well? Uh, yeah, it's getting cold. Like uh, it's still fine, but it's getting colder every day. And I like how my name is too long. That it has to be at the top of my last name in the overlay. <laughs> oh, wow! Yeah, that is a, that's kind of a ridiculous name as well. That's like three constants. G R Z. What sound yeah, does ahead. that even make? Try to pronounce it. Huh? Try to pronounce it. Good luck. Gregors. Gregors. It's like if the R Z was S H. That will be easier to. Gregors. Gregors, yeah. Yeah, I don't that's, think that's so. Awesome. Whatever. You're trolling. You're trolling. You're just one of these guys in the chat. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and start talking about some StarCraft. There was a pretty cool little post made by Blizzard mm. regarding possible balance changes for after BlizzCon, like basically during the off season, where this stuff can kind of be tested out and people don't like ruin their WCS careers because it goes terribly wrong, right? So it's kind of smart, first off, I think, that they're doing that. But let's let's start to go through these because they have a lot that they've been talking about. Uh, I guess we'll just start going down the list. Mm -hmm. Mech, ground, and air attack upgrades combined. So, I mean, obviously we already have the armor upgrade combined, but putting the attack in there, I think this is the one that doesn't matter the most. What do you guys think about this one? Mm -hmm. I think Bunny should start, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it doesn't matter that much outside of TBT. Like, it's an upgrade that makes Mick better late game, where it's already really good. Um, so I thought it was a little bit strange. Like, uh, in Bio versus Mick, we often see these big sky switches from Bio late game, and it might be helpful with that. But I can't really see it making a difference versus Zerg or Protoss. Maybe against Zerg a little bit, but yeah, I don't think it matters that much, mostly in TVT. Yeah, I think so too. Like in TVP, um, I don't think it's a big uh, change. Uh, like some people went mech anyway, but like switch to air is like never an option usually. Like even if there are battle cruisers, I think it, we never saw <laughs> battle cruisers in TVP. Like I used to see them like on Korean ladder like long time ago in Wings of Liberty, but uh, I don't think it's like a, much of a change in uh, TVP. Actually, 4GG might be really happy with this because he always makes the hillbats versus Protoss. So if you get the air attack, the hillbats also uh, yeah, that's true. do more damage now. True. So if you go he hillbat can... with Bio, that might be better now, actually. He can finally go hellbat viking against Protoss. That would be wonderful. See, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what do you think? Know. It's not. It's not too significant. But mm. one of the things that I immediately thought about with the old uh, merge as well was that it's going to be a little bit more tricky to play Broodlords, for example, in TVC, because the Vikings just get so much stronger now that the uh, upgrades for those are combined as well. I think using Broodlords and Corruptors against uh, Terran is going to be a little bit more difficult. Mm. But apart from that, I don't think it's too significant. Um, just that Vikings and Sky Terran will be a bit stronger. Okay, so, as I mean, aside from... TVT, because I could see some reasons why in TVT this might make Mech a bit more powerful, as Bunny's saying, but is there any other reason that we can find why they shouldn't do something like this? Because it seems, I look at this, I'm like, there's no way this is going to imbalance anything in the game, right? <laughs> this isn't yeah, going to screw so, things yeah. up, is mm, it? Uh, I think uh, Vikings are going to be a lot stronger against Broodlords, but that's the only thing that I can think of. Um, Mech is going to be a lot stronger against Zerg, and... Um, I guess that's what Terran needs right now, but I can't help but feel at the same time that Swarmhost are maybe a bit too strong and Broodlord's a bit too weak against Mech, but 
I might be mistaken here. Mm. With Bio, you always get the armor anyway for the mines and medivacs, so it doesn't matter uh, for Bio versus Brute Lords. Really. Mm. Well, on on that subject, the next two changes are like they're kind of related to to this. I think it's. The the widow mine splash radius decreased from 1.75 to 1.25. They were thinking about 1.1, but I guess they changed that over now to 1.25, which seems a little bit more reasonable and to me at least. And the siege tank attack cooldown from three to 2.7. So th I they put some sort of uh, explanation in with this where they want siege tanks and widow mines used together against Zerg instead. Just start talking about this because this is actually to me the the most interesting change. I mean, like the uh, splash radius decrease of the widow mine is so good for for products. Like there used to be a widow mine drop and they like kept on triggering the the probe, let's say for the gas and the splash radius uh, got the probes even mining the minerals or the uh, probe running away got shot by the widow mine and when we got like. I don't know, seven or six uh, probe kills, so this will be way lower. Uh, but other than that, I don't think it will affect that much in, in TVP. Uh, in TVZ, I've saw so many Widow Mine shots which kill like, I don't know, 30, 30, something like that. And these were like game changers, for example, if it would blow up on the uh, on the bane link. So I think it's a good change, but I'm not like the TVZ expert. Mm. Yeah. Even versus Protoss, like the Widow Mine openers are getting less and less popular, more people are going with like the Wings of Liberty, free racks after expansion, get the mm -hmm. quick medivacs, stim, uh, plus one. So, I don't think it would be that significant versus Protoss. Uh, versus Zerg is obviously going to have a huge impact. I don't see tanks replacing mines, like, you maybe a combination like you said, I actually haven't thought of that, going tank mine, that would be insanely hard to micro, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess it could be good maybe because the problem with the tanks it's not like they do okay against the ground army it's actually not that much worse than the mines but you just get shredded by mutilisk if you try to go tanks um, because the mutilisk can pick off the tanks they're so fast now it's kind of hard to defend everywhere when you're not producing mines to like place one at an expansion or in your main or something like that to defend against the mutilisk and tanks they kind of function differently than mines, where the more you get, the better they are. Where with mines, if you just have a few, they're still going to be really good, so they fit well with the rally style that Terran is doing right now, where you can't really rally tanks in the same way because one or two tanks is not going to do as much. It's so. just easier to snipe them as well. They're yeah. big. <laughs> <laughs> easier to right-click on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we're worried Jeez. about at this point. I don't know what game we're <laughs> playing anymore. <laughs> no, I think Blizzard wants to put an end to the um, triple command Widow Mine train that we see all turns use nowadays. Innovation does it all the time. And it's. Um, I think it's good because they want to make teching actually useful, to make getting siege tanks useful, to probably. They probably want to see more high tech units. Um, into the matchup rather than just the Widow Mine train. So I really like this change. And um, I practiced some on the European ladder. And I, um, actually s I've actually seen people move away from Widow Mines already and over to Siege Tanks. And I feel like it was pretty powerful. And I think, especially if this patch goes uh, through as well, then I think we'll see lots of interesting plays where... Um, uh, right now, I feel that if Zerg can just hold on for long enough and get like 30 mutas or something, there's no way that Terran can win. But with mm -hmm. this, I feel like there, it's a lot easier for the Terran to get into tanks and then eventually Thors and then eventually uh, later on to the later stages of the game. So I think this change is going to be really nice because um, we'll see less of the uh, Terran all-ins with the Widowmine trains mm -hmm. and we will see more complex games and more high-tech games. Mm -hmm. So TVC do you think that is, could... oh. Oh, go ahead. Uh, TVC is definitely getting a bit stale. Like, it's kind of like free CC at I trying at this point. Just the same builds for months with the free CC. We don't mind. Try to kill the yeah. whole base. And it's the and same for Zerg as well. Just 85 drones and then uh, Mira, Mira Ling Bane, and just defend and hope that you can get enough Miras. But yeah, the good so. thing about TVZ, I think, is like there are so many engagements that there's like trading. Terran is trading, Zerg is trading. 
uh, if Terran has a good micro, Zerg has a like good connection with Banelings. It's always just so fun for me to watch TVZ rather than like one good engagement in PVT, for example, or one good engagement in PVZ or PVP, which changes the game completely. That's true, and I think uh, with these changes, there is also a risk that the game will um, become a bit less aggressive again. That we will have more death balls and more big engagements rather than the continuous actions. So. Mm -hmm. The first you know, 10 minutes of a TVC is just always so similar right now. Uh, you see both sides building up and whoever does best in the mid game has the best mechanics usually win. And it can get a bit stale to play as well when, as Terran when you're just doing the same build like 20 times a day or something if you're just practicing TVC. Because everything else just feels pretty gimmicky. So if it creates more diversity I'd really like that in the metro. Although it's really good. Uh, as it is now, right now, it's just a little bit too much of the same. Yeah, that's I, why I think the armor upgrades or the armor change is so important because it helps out with the turn actually getting the tanks and Thors up. So mm. I think it's good. Well, there's there's something kind of weird about this to me because it's like I I like that they're trying to get away from that because I do feel like TVZ I can cast with my eyes closed at this point it's just the same exact game over and over and over uh, but they're like pushing siege tanks in which makes mutas better and as you said that means Thors might come into play a little bit later on but if you look at all the different changes that they're kind of looking at and they've kind of talked about so far in the past week a lot of it is upping speeds and making the races more mobile overall to have, you know, just more mobility on the map, more action, more places things are happening, which is a good thing. But it feels like this is a decreased mobility to Terran. So is that going to be an actual issue? Because I definitely could see that death ball type thing. Like, how are you going to respond correctly? If you have to go like Widowmine, Siege Tank, Thor, plus your bio... Is is Terran going to kind of be a little bit boned in that matchup because of this? Well, I can't see this change as it is now helping Terran at all. Like, it's pretty horrible for Terran as it is now, honestly. Um, I also think, uh, like, I haven't seen statistics or anything, but to me it seems that Zerks are getting better at playing against Terran. Like, innovation is losing more and more series, and in general it seems like Zerg are figuring it out a bit more. Also because Terran is just doing the 3cc so much, and Zerg have a lot of all-ins to abuse that. Whereas Terran just sits and plays the same style over and over. So I think, like last month, I think Terran won 55% of official matches or something. But I wouldn't be surprised if this month it was pretty balanced. And I think with this change, as it, as it is now, mm, Terran win rates might go down a bit. <laughs> mm. So what do you think about that? Is it is this going to make it easier or harder for you? Not sure, actually. Uh, the Widow Mind Splash is going to help a lot. I mean, Mutas are still going to be, I feel, the most important unit in the matchup for Zerg. And as a turn, it's probably all about dealing with the mass Mutas. Um, because of the Widow Mines being nerfed, the uh, Zerglings and all the ground units are going to be stronger. And you need Siege Tanks to to even it out. So, so the Terran army is going to be a lot weaker, and I don't know, I think it might be really difficult for Terran, but um, yeah, yeah, I think it will be really difficult for Terran, but the upgrades will help out a bit, and um, I don't know, it might be a bit tricky, I have to admit, uh, if this change goes through, then Terran could be in a bit of trouble against Mass Mira, and especially strong mid-game plays. And it's only if they make it to the later stages of the game that I think it can get easier for them. Like if they have a lot of siege tanks, a lot of mm. Thors. But but then again, you have the base race and stuff. So mm, yeah, it's mm. going to be really difficult for Terran. But yeah, they're going to have a I strong mean, death ball as well. We've we've seen so many nerfs of Terran, like so many of them. And they keep on doing very well. So I think they'll <laughs> be fine. Like they need just need to figure out like the new changes, get used to it, then adjust the build orders and uh, unit positioning or as well as the composition. It'll be fine. Like I don't think there are like drastic changes. Like the Widow Mind Splash for TBZ definitely is like the biggest change. Or actually the Siege Tank could be that big change as well. As you said. Mm. So I, I'm, I just think they will be fine. Just need some time to adjust if the changes will go through. 
Mm. Yeah, but as for mobility, uh, Terran still has the Turbo Vax, so you can still yeah. pick up a Thor, and then you can Turbo oh, it to true. your army. So it's not like there are no options. Um, Terran is still pretty mobile, and those, if you have Thors in your army, like two Thors, are just an insane pain in the ass for Zerg to deal with. Mm. Uh, it, it it can shut down so many mutas, and you need to control so much differently, and your trades at that point just become so much less cost efficient. But the problem for Terran right now is actually making it to the point where you have Thors without just losing first. Mm. So uh, that's going to be a bit strange with the Widow Mine nerf. Like, what what are you going to do first? Are you going to go Widow Mine into Siege Tank, or are you going to go Widow Mine into Thor, or Siege Tank Thor? I don't know. It's just going to be really weird. Mm, yeah, I could so. imagine like you always get two factories, one with a tech lab and one with the reactor to get the uh, drilling claws upgrade. So I could imagine Terrence just starting to build fours out of that first tech lab as soon as possible. I mean, it's still really hard. Like in TVC right now, I feel that if like the parade push is pushed back and you're forced to defend, Mutalisk just becomes so good because... Like, as soon as you try to move out, there's Mutalisk and you're a fourth or third base or something. So it's it's hard to establish a good economy on four bases against the most Muta styles right mm. now. Mm. So I'm excited to see how that will turn out if Terrans are going to get better at defending that. Because right now it feels like Mutalisk are really strong. I don't know if any of you watched Curious vs. Innovation, like that series from the qualifiers. I haven't seen really it yet. Good. I'm curious played like a boss with his Mutalisk in that series. It's really mm. nice to watch. Especially the second game on Frost. Mm. Well, looks like we uh, lost Snoot here for a moment. So let's talk about <laughs> he got the, mad. Siege, <laughs> the, yeah. the Siege Tank switch, the the quicker fire rate. Could you see this doing anything different to Terran vs. Protoss? Mm, uh, actually, when the Terrans are playing mech, uh, I've because there's not too many people playing mech, I have some trouble playing against it because I don't yeah. have the experience. Um, now, like when there, uh, when there were Hellbats without nerf uh, before, um, it was very hard. But now, after the nerf of Hellbats, I haven't faced mech a lot of times. Um, I think it, it can change for sure. The mech can be more playable than it was for sure. But not sure how big of a change it is. I've, I need to see like in game because without seeing actually like with a big line of siege thing how d how do they fire like how strong mm. the army is so mm. it's it's hard to, it's hard to judge now. Okay, it seems like I guess that changed three to two point seven ten percent quicker. So yeah. instead like ten shots, you'll get eleven shots in or something like that. Mm. Well, the the immortals will die faster probably because <laughs> uh, of the one additional shot. Um, still. You, I think Terrans, while making, are still lacking ghosts because they make like this mass mm. tank, uh, Hellbats, uh, like Vikings. So they're like, go, let's do this. Then like Archon the Immortal just rapes it, like without <laughs> losing basically two two and more Immortals. So like having a lot of ghosts is a key to play Mech, I think, and keep mm. on dropping the Hellbats because a lot of Terrans when I play Mech, uh, when I play against Mech, like because I don't play the, that many uh, Terrans who play Mech, but they just don't make Hellbat drops anyway, like. When they they got the nerve and they never do that again, even like in the mid state, uh, middle game. I'm saying, I, mm. mean. I used to play Mega a lot before the Hillbat nerf, or just Hillbat drop all game, and that was why <laughs> it was good. Like you ended up with four, fifty more supply or something. Yeah. But oh, every that's time what, that's the, the nerf. <laughs> yeah, every time yeah. the supply was even, I would always lose because like the composition is just not very good, Mrs. Protoss. Even though you'd think like Meg would be more cost efficient than Bio. It's actually not the case. Yeah, it's like one big engagement can change the game again. Like, very bad engagement for a Terran and the game changes completely. Like, you have to turtle out until you're maxed out again. And the toss is, can just remax easily. And when there's like a little of mech left, it's not like with the bio when you kill the whole uh, Protoss army, like reinforcement with the Zealots, you can kite with bio. But with mech, when there's just some tanks or some Hellbats left, like one immortal can make a huge change, and the uh, warping of zealots can get on the top of the siege line, and it's just like uh, the reinforcements are stronger, I think, against mech than mm. uh, versus bio. Yeah. Have to agree with that, definitely. Uh, I mean, is this something that 
at least you would try to go mech a little bit because I know there's like a few Terrans that do try to go mech a lot. Like especially in Europe, you got like your. Well, I guess Goody doesn't anymore, but uh, of course Strahlock uses a lot of mech and stuff like that. Is this something, Bunny, for you that you might try, like mm. to go mech maybe for a week or something and see if you can figure something out with the quicker siege tank fire? Mm, nah, not really. I'm actually really comfortable with the way I play versus Furth right now. So mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't do that, but I can imagine Strelak being like really cheery that tanks are <laughs> fire quicker now. <laughs> Strelak and Goody having a party like. And actually, oh, the, yeah. the new Terran, uh, Uthermal, is playing mech quite often as well. Or at, at least adding a lot of siege tanks to his army, so he might be happy about it as well. Uh, cool, cool. Yeah, maybe. All right. I think we've talked about that that little piece of the balance chain. Just talk talk about uh, the Roach speed uh, upgrade. It now also increases the burrowed Roach movement speed. And uh, to put this into perspective, what it boosts it to... Let me take a look where I wrote this. Okay, it, it's basically now the same speed as, like, everything when it's burrowed. It's the same speed as a Roach without speed that's just on regular ground. It, it's the same speed as, like, the Colossus, the Immortal, the Sentry, the Void Ray, the Zealot, the Ghost, the Hellbat, the Marauder, the Marine, the Raven, the Sea Chain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's like the burrowed Roach is, like, a normal-speeded unit now. Oh, what do you guys think about that one? I think it's good because right now it's just almost useless. We don't really see burrowed roaches anymore. Uh, I think it will make the most of a difference in CVP because we'll see like third breaker builds with uh, roaches involved, especially against uh, the proto styles that go for really fast uh, charge slots and uh, and storm. I think it will be really strong. So I think I think it will have the most impact in. Uh, in CVP for sure, but we also still see some Roach play in CVC, especially in Korea. It seems like uh, Roach CVC is still quite popular, so yeah. we might see it come to play there as well. Mm -hmm. I, I think it will give like additional builds for Zerg, uh, as you said, for first breakers. Like Protoss will uh, make maybe like more Immortals to um, save the third, or maybe focus more on Void Race, even though that uh, the PVC is very uh, based on void race uh, already, um, I think there will be like just more void race to to um, defend the third, uh, to defend against the roaches. Um, other than that, I think making a lot of roaches will not be that useful uh, because they are useless in the like uh, the later stages of the game. Um, so basically, that will be the only change I think, unless there are like some smart guys that will make something completely different than I think. And it will be like game or another matchup changing. Yeah, I think it's just going to give Zerg some more options in the mid game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. but we can now have Roach Roach pushes as well, or for example, Burrow Roach and uh, Nidus Queen could be something. Um, because right now it seems pretty stale, to be honest. We just have uh, Zerg going up to uh, three bases and six gas, and then it's usually some sort of Hydralisk pressure into something else, like. Fourth base, eight gas, mutalisk, transition, or ro roach hider, corruptor. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to bring a little bit more diversity into the matchup. So yeah, that's nice. That's good. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually played against borrowed roaches of Terran. Like I've lost some games where they just pop up in all your mineral lines. You're like, well, I guess I lose. Uh, I should build a turret next time. But other than that, yeah, obviously not very useful. It's Terran. <laughs> yeah. That I, I couldn't see it used that much. Well, who knows? Maybe maybe Terran Mech comes back strong and suddenly you have reasonably quick burrowed roaches coming after you. I don't I don't know. <laughs> Chasing burrowed roaches. Yeah. I think it will be nice against Mech. It's going to encourage the use of uh, roach drops with burrow as well. Mm. So someone like TLO would probably be really happy about this change. Yeah, so you can just true. burrow roaches and send them everywhere and be really annoying with your multitask. Huh. Um... But I think Roach is still in straight up combat against uh, Siege Tanks and the Mech Army. It's not like you will utilize Burrowed Roaches for an assault, for example, on a, on a Mech Army. Because the Siege Tanks are just even stronger now. So I think it's going to be more like they wanted to make a change for the uh, Dark Templar, for example. They wanted to be yeah. easier for the, Zerg, uh, for the Zerg to harass and 
escape and burrow the roaches and be annoying and stuff. I think yeah. that's one of the main purposes for CVT. Whereas for CVP, it's probably going to be more of a third breaker type of thing. Like hmm. tons of roaches just going in and popping up and killing everything. Makes sense. Uh, speaking of that Dark Templar change, it looks like they've taken it out, but let's just talk about it anyways and what it could have done. They were thinking <laughs> of giving it a speed increase, like the biggest speed increase I think I've ever seen on anything in any game ever. I think uh, they were going to make it speed buff would be better, uh, would be bigger like they wanted to uh, remove the warpism speed and uh, give it like un when without the upgrade the speed with the warpism upgrade speed yeah. I think that would be bigger Yeah like no, they that wanted would... to do that They wanted to do that Yeah like yeah like I before would love that. that would be amazing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but they, <laughs> Then they got the feedback and they well they switched it like it is now Oh damn well the the DT was going to be in mean, the first thing that they posted. They it was going to be the same speed as like the Oracle, a warp prism with speed, stimmed marines, and hydras on Kree. Warp prism with speed? Yeah. Same? Really? Yeah, yeah. I have. Why did they remove that? <laughs> like no, it was. I'm it was going to be the fastest. Yeah, I'm going to post in the chat for everyone the the speed thing from Liquipedia. Uh, but like it's actually it that's how fast it was going to be which is what what would the world be like if dark templars were that quick you could finally like chase down the workers that would be like the most useful thing i think because now you, you can swipe the works but you can not always do the damage like when the swipe is not done you can kill like maybe one or two pro max mm. um, i think this would be like faster or the same speed as the stimmed units mm. i think yeah same yeah, speed as the same speed marine. Yeah, so you could run away from the scans, for example. That would be very useful, if not imbalance. Like, it would be so useful. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, I don't know. I think it would be, like, very uh, good usage of, with, uh, the, like, programming hands. But mm. uh, I think at least they, they should give it to the um, test map, like, to see. Uh, I would love to see a DT fast like that. Oh, God. Imagine if they actually went through with that patch change. Bisu would feel so stupid for retiring. You'd finally get into Code S. <laughs> I can just imagine well, versus Terran, like, you warp in three DTs and just run past the bunker. Like, they don't even care if there's a turret. Yeah, or even Inca would be so happy. Yeah, that's... Oh, my God, that's true. They're actually, like... They're almost like charge lots at that point. You just, like, keep them in your army to close against the Terran or something like that. <laughs> I can imagine too, you know, like you just run past the speedlings and past the spore crawler. It would, it would be a wonderful change. I would really. Can enjoy run. It. it could run away from the overseer too if it was the fast. Yeah, but not it could run away from every detection, right? Wow. You have to really trap. Oh, not with the oracle. Not with the oracle, if it's the same speed with the envision. That's true. Yeah, you could catch mm -hmm. it with the oracle. <laughs> <laughs> I was so sad when I saw like the patch. So only Protoss could deal with the new DTs. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they are really difficult to catch as it is, and for Terran, if they can get even better at avoiding scans, then I think it will just be too much. I feel like mm, Terran, yeah. whenever I watch TVP broadcasting games, I feel like they uh, have a lot of trouble with uh, DTs and scans as it is. So I think this change would have just been absolutely ridiculous, at least if the change was this big. I could accept something like uh, maybe giving it 20 more base hit points or something, but mm. this much speed would be a bit too much. There's no worse feeling than the DT just running outside of the scan range, and if that would happen all the time, man, it would be so frustrating. So, I'm happy they didn't decide to go through with it. Yeah. Well, it's it's good that they took that out. I think we can all kind of agree on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but speaking of fast Protoss units, <laughs> uh, the the Oracle has a few changes coming. Originally, they were saying like just to reduce the gas by fifty, but mm -hmm. it looks like the new thing that they're saying is. Which for me, for the 50 gas, this seems like a deal. Um, speed increased from 3.375 to 4. Let me just look that up. What has 4 speed? I think Mutalisks. Mutalisk, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, Mutalisk. Mutalisk. And then faster than them would be the Phoenix, the Hellion, Medivac with its ability, Speed Zerglings, and Zolots that are charging. And interceptors. Okay, who cares? Um, <laughs> like all the interceptors can catch it. That makes it balanced. Um, okay, so basically, it becomes as fast as a mutalisk. 
Uh, the acceleration would be increased from two to three, so that's 50% quicker at excelling. And revelation range increased from nine to ten, which I can see why they would do that. That makes a lot of sense to me. But what about this change? If this change were to go through, what does that look like for you guys? Like uh, in PvP, you know, it's a pain in the ass when you see an oracle in the middle line. And sometimes you want to set a trap with like, let's say, four stalkers, three stalkers. Like, I don't have any defense, but then the stalkers show up. Now they can fucking run away. <laughs> like, you cannot <laughs> do this anymore. So I'm not sure about this speed, uh, speed change in PvP. Uh, I mean, this can be like very useful in, P uh, in the like micro, but they it's setting a trap for an oracle. It can be so hard. Like, mm. uh, I don't. I think it might be like too quick. I don't see a reason to change oracle in this like this speed. It's it's very quick already. It might be just uh, too strong. I think. Yeah, in PvP, I actually as soon as I see the speed upgrade and. As well as the Excel, because the Excel is really how you get away from these stalkers. Yeah. Uh, I could see PvP turning into, if this went through, Phoenixes. Just Phoenixes. Because it's so obvious everyone's going to go Oracle, you just open Phoenix. And you're like, yeah, whatever. Standard, and one, one Phoenix expand will be. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, but what about the other matchups for this, this change? Mm. Uh, I'd rather have the oracles have this than the 50 less cast, to be honest. And the well, acceleration is... Be faster than... <laughs> I think the acceleration is uh, even more important than the speed, because whenever I kill the oracle, it's always because it can't like get away when it's standing still trying to harass workers, because the acceleration is actually so slow in right now. I think slower than anything else in the game when compared to how fast it is when it gets going. Mothership. Maybe workers has a lot of acceleration. Very slow acceleration too, but it doesn't really fix the problem with the Oracle in Terran vs Protoss because I feel like if you're prepared for it, it's not going to do like the damage. It doesn't matter how fast it is, and it's kind of like a hit or miss unit. It's, it's I think like I think. a lot of Terrans are uh, doing like this one turret in the mineral line, but with the new acceleration and new speed increase, like you can take off one worker each, like. Uh, shot once, run away, shot shot second time and kill the worker, like, because the tourist will shot only once instead of, like, four times for one worker. Yeah. I think that could maybe. be, like, uh, the biggest change uh, for PvT, but still, as I said, like, it doesn't change much because the defense is good, like, when the, when the Oracle goes, like, unnoticed, it can basically change the game, but it's not good when the defense is ready, like, it's not useful on, uh, only for the revelation, which is, like, very good for spotting, uh, let's say, um, medivac drops. Uh, so and versus Zerg, like uh, the army positioning in the in the late game. So um, I think it's a it's a big change for. Uh, I mean, not a big change, but like a useful change uh, for for TVP. Um, not sure how much it will change the the whole game. Like you can micro more, and the revelation range increase from nine to ten. I don't see a big difference in that. That way you can revelation a, a Viking without being shot. Wow, <laughs> I can run away yeah. from it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I think the revelation change is the most important for CVP because the Viper abduction is range nine, and now the Oracle can cast revelation without being uh, pulled in by the Viper. Um, you can, like, aside from the, that, the oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, aside from that, I don't think in CVP sorry. that this is going to have too much of a difference. Uh, the Oracles will be in, in the Zerg space a little bit before. So Zerg just has to be a little bit more on top with their uh, defenses. But apart from that, uh, for Zerg, the Oracle is still kind of like Banish said, a uh, hit and miss unit. If the Zerg knows that it's coming, then usually it can't really accomplish a whole lot. So the changes here, I think, are pretty good for Zerg compared to the uh, gas change. Because the more gas the Proto spends into something that's not useful in the mid-game, for example, the better for the Zerg. So I'm kind of glad. Uh, myself being a Zerg that the uh, 50, 50 less gas change didn't go through, so it's not too bad. Okay. It's interesting both of you guys agree on that. Uh, you know, I look at this and I, the way that they package this together, I feel like the aim isn't for Oracle Rushes to get out there and kill more workers. I don't feel like that's what they're trying to get us to do with this, because, you know, Blizzard, like, they change things like the War Prism, and they're like, just use it more, and then people start using it more, and it makes the game better. I feel like this is for Revelation specifically, where 
it would be pretty cool to have, like, could you guys see with these changes, for instance, just a little bit later in the game, you know, you're on, like, four bases as Protoss. The Protoss just makes an Oracle so that they can run around and tag that army and do revelations because it's so fast that if you're actually on top of it, you're never going to lose it. Like, it's just, it won't die. As long as you're actually looking at the unit, you're going to get away from every single thing in the entire game. Yeah, I, I agree on that completely. Like, even now, I'm trying to uh, have an Oracle in the mid game or later stages of the game to see the army positioning of my opponent. It's like a mobile sensor tower, basically. Hmm. Hmm. I've always I thought it was a little bit thing. underused, the revelation. Like, it's so good versus Terran for, like, the EMP versus Storm thing. Oh, if you yes, always yeah. know exactly where the army is, you don't even need observers to see the army soon. The problem goes when the ghosts are going to be cloaked. <laughs> 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 yeah, but if you check the rest of the army, you have an idea where it is. The only way um, you win TVP late game is just by killing all the observers, so we have a huge vision advantage with the scan, so you can always take the better fight. But if you always know where the army is, it's a little easier, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And also the envision range is like bigger than the observers. So if you keep the Oracle like even slightly behind your army, it's harder to snipe it with the Vikings, for example, so you can still see the ghosts. Oh, that's actually... I didn't know that that range was... Is it significantly bigger? I think it's like three. Like observer range, I think oh. it's nine and the Oracle is 12, something like that. I'm, oh, if sick. you like, can double yeah. check that, I'm, I'm sure it's it's uh, it's bigger. Damn, that's that's how I lose all my late game. Is the cloak ghosts come in and fuck me up, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you're like you so, see the army dying, like only medivacs left, and then you see like 20 ghosts cloak oh, shit, like, killing yeah. everything. <laughs> it's pretty rough. Where's my observer? Hmm. Could uh, revelation become a problem late game for Zerg Snoop? Hmm. I think we have to deal with it anyway, no matter what happens. Uh, it doesn't work on Swarm Host, because the Swarm Host can just burrow and then uh, the uh, revelation disappears. But um, it's something that you want to use on the Vipers and the Corruptors, so that your Tempest can shoot them. And before, it was very easy for the Vipers to pull the Oracles in, and then you would trade cost efficiently, even if you lost uh, some hit points on your Viper or Corruptors or whatever, the Oracle would always die. So eventually the Protoss would have to make a new one. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to change that much, but a skillful Protoss will not lose his Oracle compared to before. Um, but yeah, it's still going to be... Yeah, It's just a minor change, to be honest, but it, okay. it will really help Protoss a little bit, and that's good, I think. Mm -hmm. So... That kind of wraps up the the changes that they're thinking about for right now. Now, do you guys approve or disapprove of this list overall? Do you think that this is something that can help the game a become more balanced and b become more entertaining and fresher? Are these like are these in the right direction or did they miss the mark? Mm, I approve. Mm. I approve. I want to see like um, fresh start to this, uh, like new builders. For example, with this road speed in CVP, can uh, give more builds. Uh, we don't mind splash radius. We'll change the TVC demos and uh, we don't mind drops. Uh, so, yeah, I, I provide want to see these changes. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I it's... think it's good. Okay, you go. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good, but I'm a little bit concerned for the turns. Um, they will probably need a bit of time to figure out what's the most optimal way to play because it's right now it's really straightforward. You just make the uh, triple command we don't mind train and it never stops. Um, so it's going to take some time for the turns to adjust. For the Zergs, it's going to be still the same pretty much. And if the Zerg then sees that the turn is tacking up, then we'll see some new and different things from Zerg as well. Some more Infestor usage and some more Broodlord usage, I believe. I hope it creates a little bit more variance. I think the mine nerf might be a little bit too harsh, but I like where they're going with trying to make more diverse gameplay instead of the Widow Mine Train, as Snoot says, every game. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned that Mech might be really dominant in TVT because personally I'm not a big fan of Mech, but I think the Siege Tank uh, attack speed increase would actually help Mech a lot in TVT. Mm. And you might have to micro differently in Bio versus Bio 2 depending on how many tanks there are. It's hard to say without actually playing with it and feeling how big of a difference it makes. Yeah, that is true. I. 
I personally really kind of like it. Just making units quicker, I'm always down for, personally, just because you're going to be able to, the better multitaskers are going to make better games for you, and mm -hmm. I think that's the hardest thing to do in StarCraft, so those players should be able to show their stuff. And, uh, but yeah, I'm a little bit worried about that, the TBZ. Like, with that, I feel like Zergs are kind of figuring it out, and I'm trying to figure out what Terran could ever beat DRG with the Widow Mines being worse than they are right now. So, a little bit nervous, but one final question on this patch. If you guys, like, in this kind of, in this vein of changes that they're trying to introduce, what is something that you would have liked to see also added in here? Like, a, a little change kind of like this that you don't think is going to really upset anything too badly. What would that change be for you guys? <laughs> it's a hard question. Yeah. Yes. Minor change. I would like to see a slight speed increase for the Bridlords. Okay, that's that's pretty reasonable. I think maybe if you wanted to make Mech better in the other matchups, you could maybe touch a little bit on the 4. I'm not sure exactly how you're going to do it, but it's not really the most used unit right now. And I feel like it wouldn't really break anything and just maybe give it a new ability or something. I think there's a little bit of unexplored space with the 4. It seems like it hasn't really found its place yet in Huts. Maybe they could do okay. something with it. Cool. I don't have an idea. Like, not not a minor change for me. Like, it's it's okay for me now. Okay. Uh. Well, I'll give you one. I want to see free interceptors. Bring back the carry. <laughs> 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 All right. On that note, let's jump to a real quick commercial break. And uh, guys, don't go anywhere. We have plenty more to talk about when we come back in just a minute. Pros always want to have gear that's exactly fitted to their needs. Something I've always dreamed about doing is using my experience as a gamer to make gear for people like me. We're working with TT Esports to make the exact mouse, keyboard, and headset that we've always wanted to use. When you're doing anything that you love to do, the tools that you're using matter the most. We're designing these products from scratch to make sure that your gaming experience is completely seamless. The gear I use to play the game are the tools I use to win.
everybody, welcome back. Part two of Meta Episode 17. We just had some great balance discussion, a lot of cool points coming out of these guys. Uh, a lot of talking about the carrier during that little break as well. <laughs> we want to be able to use a carrier, that would be fun times. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about this this other thing. I kind of got this idea from last week when we brought up that nobody is doing... Well, I don't know about you guys. Are you guys using Resume from Replay to practice any in any way at all? Um, yeah, I practiced a lot with Grubby for his uh, Season 2 group with Cold and Bomber, and he was actually using it a lot. Um, every time he would make some like game-ending mistake, he was like, well, let's try and go back and see how the game would have looked if I hadn't done this. Mm -hmm. And mm, I don't know. It's pretty useful. It's annoying that it takes so long to load up the game uh, to up to the point where you want to play from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes so long. Yeah. Like, how long does it take? About. Yeah, it's the same as watching loading up a replay and watching up to the point where you want to play. Oh, that's annoying. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Almost, Especially if you want to practice like some late game engagement or something, it just takes forever. Yeah. I think that's the main reason why people don't use it is because of the loading times that you need to spend five minutes loading and creating lobbies and all that stuff instead of uh, just having a point in the game where you can say, okay, I'm going to pause and then we will start from the same point again. And, you know, that would take maybe 15 seconds or something. So if yeah. if it was possible to do that, then I think more pros would use this feature. But for now, it's just, uh, it's not the best experience to put it that way. The technology just isn't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. It's funny because when it was announced, everyone was like, oh, this is going to be the way to practice. Like, yeah. But nobody is actually using it. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's like, yeah we yeah. can just restart the early game. It's faster. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> and then you get that little piece of extra practice, too. So Exactly. Might so. as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we talked about that a little bit last week with Rhett and TLO and Harsom, and so I was, I was looking, and the WCS Replay Pack was released, and it's every WCS game from Season 1 and Season 2. Now, this is, this is huge for me, personally, because I look at this, and I remember in StarCraft 1 days, like, if you got even one replay of a pro gamer, your entire group would sit there and watch it, like, five times and talk about it because it was so valuable. It's like, oh my god, and everyone would get better at whatever it was in that replay. Everyone like got way better at it. Uh, now with this replay pack out, it is like the most ridiculous like library of games. It has it has so much information there. So I want to ask you guys like what have you done with this replay pack? Like what regions did you look at? Uh, did you study any certain players? Did you look at any specific builds? Did you try to prepare for any opponents that you've played perhaps in this season in qualifiers or in uh, your, your leagues? Or, I mean, did you, did you use them to steal some build orders or refine things you were doing? Did you use them to just tell me everything about what you guys may or may not have done? Is this something that's helped you? Do you see it as something big? I want to hear it all. Well, I think every one of us, or uh, at least me, <laughs> there's no, no secret about it. Like, uh, we all watched uh, the Korean region for sure, the replays of it. Uh, I was personally looking for some good PvZ builds, like for, or at least for the situations I wanted to see. For example, uh, when a protest is like Force fast expanding into third base and uh, the Zerg is doing like some kind of pressure into Muta Switch. But I haven't seen much of it and I couldn't actually find uh, many games of it. So uh, I was kind of disappointed that I was not uh, uh, able to find what I was looking for, uh, especially in the mm, World of Finals when even a single Protoss, uh, no, I mean, there was not a series that Protoss won against Zerg, so I had a hard time like finding things <laughs> that I wanted to, to see, and well, I got no, no, uh, no, no, anything new, so I was kind of sad with this replay back. Um, As a Protoss, I do have to echo that. I, I've been like looking through that replay pack for the last two days, and I'm like, there's actually, unless I want to refine my PVT a bit more, there's not that much in here. But, <laughs> Bunny, go ahead with what you're going to say. Yeah. Uh, like, I've just looked at some specific games which I uh, saw live on the stream because I don't want to have to look through all the games and find out which one I actually useful. So I just go over the games I've already seen with like Pold and Tasia. There's a fly. 
<laughs> and their <laughs> like their That's PVT, because they're the only ones who doesn't pull all their SCVs every game, <laughs> which gets kind of boring to do. So um, I've been learning to play without that, and so far it's been going really well. Um, apart from that, not much else. I don't feel like there's much uh, like innovation to be had in Terran builds. <laughs> Fun intended, but well, you did get to the round of four. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's pretty much the same builds, and it's just like how well can you execute what you're actually doing, and how are you using the units that you're given. So I was looking into that a little bit with PVT, but not much. That's cool. So yeah. Pult and Tage are your big guys because of TVP. So you're, yeah. you're not a fan of pulling SCVs then because I actually get like ridiculously surprised last night when Keen wasn't pulling SCVs for the first time in his life which by the way got knocked out I wonder <laughs> if that had something to do with it um, you know when someone doesn't pull SCVs I actually oftentimes get surprised I'm like what I mean you might be yeah. able to actually kill Protoss right here what, what are your thoughts on, on that little piece specifically because I'm, I'm quite interested in that as well just uh, SCV pulling versus not doing it yeah yeah Mm. Well, I feel like thing? I feel like it's stupid to just play one or the other. Be like, I don't ever want to pull SCV, so be like, I want to play without it. Like, Pult never ever does it. Teja does it occasionally, but very rarely. I think it's strongest against Colossus builds, and it's strongest if you plan on doing it early on, so you can time all your upgrades and your Ghost Academy and everything to uh, line up perfectly. Mm. But TVP, it's everyone plays different. I feel it's a pretty cool matchup right now. There's the innovation as CV pull timing, and then there's the one that Bomber made. It's kind of two different ones. Bomber he plays like blind counter to the free Colossus into Storm. When he sees Colossus, he just waits a long time for his plus two. Then he goes like right when the Storm is supposedly not done. An innovation goes a bit earlier than that. He goes with one one five rex and three ghost. Well, mm -hmm. like right when his first three ghosts pop out from his five rex, he goes with everything, and it's really strong. But versus Templar, I feel like it's a lot harder to SCV pull than uh, versus mm -hmm. Colossus because of how Templars work defensively. They're just such a good defensive unit when you have to attack into storm. It gets really hard. Where if you just have enough Vikings for Colossus, you can just shift Q, make the SCVs tank, and that's <laughs> it. And the SCVs are not really tanking the Storm in the same way, because you can throw the Storm down on the bio, whereas the Colossus will shoot the SCVs. Mm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it also feels a little bit gimmicky, even though it might not be. So it's a bit weird. I like to play longer games, mm. so that's why I, look. I think it's just a stylistic thing, maybe. Okay. And you need really, really good control to play a long game. Like Tejer, he I think he has the best control out of any player in StarCraft 2. And he is the best at playing long games versus Protoss for sure, I think. For sure yeah. he is. You are damn right on that. Mm. Yeah, it that can be liquid practice. practice. Hmm? That Team Liquid practice, that's why he's so good. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> it's true. Hmm. Now, he is actually He's like the only Terran that I feel like does late game TVP exactly right. The, how many Observer City kill against Rain in that one game on twenty eight? Twenty eight, I think. It was yeah, yeah it was a lot sense. of observers. That was like two <laughs> geysers worth of observers or something. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, Snoop, how about you? What did, what have you done with this replay pack so far? Hmm. Um, I feel like it came out a bit late, of course. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice to have replays like the day after the game was played or something. Um, but strategically for Zerg, we can easily extract everything from the VODs. So to me, strategically, there wasn't really a whole lot of new stuff because you can see all of that in the VOD and pros spend time watching the uh, WCS as well. So whenever there's a match that's interesting, like all of Jadong's games, I watched all of them. And and try to learn from them. So I think one of the most interesting things that you can extract from replays afterwards is probably the um, first-person camera of the players. Ah, yeah. 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 Be because that's the only difference that I can see. Because you can see how they um, move the mouse, uh, how they, not the mouse, but you know, the camera, 
and how they focus their attention. Because that's really important when you play. Like, um, before this show started, I, for instance, checked out one of Scarlet's games just to see when Scarlet spread creep mm. in, uh, in her CVT against MMA, I think. Just, just to check, like, uh, how to focus your attention when this and this happens. Not so much focusing on the strategy, but more on the uh, movement and mm. the management of the play field, so to speak. So, yeah, I think that can be nice for um, players to study, like see how the Koreans spend their attention. When do they go back to do their injects? When do they do this and this and that mechanically related? I think that's one of the biggest uh, things that you can extract from the replays because in in the VODs you already have the um, production tab, you know, everything. So there's not really too much to say about that. So I think the real value is in the first person camera. Okay. Yeah, I, I really do like what you're saying there. Like One thing a lot of people don't realize is that in Korea, it's while APM is something that they've always looked at, it's always how quickly are you changing your screen. Like They never use their mouse to scroll and stuff. They use only hotkeys and just important things like that. And that's actually, that's definitely, I like that. And this is actually kind of interesting what you each said kind of different things. Like, Snoot, you're using it to look at how the player's spending attention. Bunny, you're looking at it kind of to see the way that Pult and Tasia use what they're given to or what they get to accomplish what it is you want to do. And mm. Mana, you're trying to find a way to beat Zerg like every other Protoss on this planet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's all my Protoss friends talk about. It's always like PVC threats. <laughs> PVC, like... This is how it is, this... Uh, I tried to take a third base, but it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, <laughs> that's, I just, I don't know. I think that's really interesting the way the three different races kind of are looking at things. Uh, but have you guys gone in, like, for instance, Bunny and Mana, have you guys sat in that first person view and tried to look how is the attention spent for some of these yeah, pro gamers like Snoop was talking about? This is how I watch replays, like I put on the uh, process camera and I put on like tw uh, twice speed and I just see how it plays, like where he pays the attention, like it's, and uh, I try to, like I, I don't even have a production tab on, so I guess like, okay, he might be switching mutas now, what what will I do in in his position? And I try to watch replays like that, I think it like gains a lot of information, then I see what ex actually happens in the game and if I was right, then I like uh, rewind the replay, check with the production tab if I was right and stuff like this. Oh, that's mm. cool. Yeah, that's also a reason that when like Pold and Tasia streams, because those are like the two I look at for a strategy and play. Uh, I often watch it, even though they might not play their most serious strategies. You can still pick off habits of how they micro and how they move the camera around and stuff. Mm. Uh, yeah, I watch streams for that mostly in replays. It's just like a unit army movement and stuff like that. I look at mostly. Cool. Well, now, Snoot, you mentioned that the replay pack felt a bit late and you'd love to have them next day, which I'd have to agree with. I would kill to have replays the next day. You could stay so on top of everything. But do you think that's the way it should be? Like, it would be nice, but is that the way it should be? If you were, like, a top player playing in the very top league, well, you are, but you know what I mean. Like, let's say that you're in Code S <laughs> and your replay is released and your opponent can suddenly... You know, you're going to the finals and you played a Terran in the round before and he played a Zerg. Or, no, he played like a Protoss, so you can't do it to him. You know what I mean? And it's like you're going to play for 20k the next day or something. Like, is it, should they do it like that or should they wait till the whole season is over? Uh, I think the players should always um, be the most important thing, the ones that are left in the tournament. So, um while it would be nice, I think there are also some small things when you move your camera and react to certain pieces of information. You might do certain things um, that are based upon what you saw with your camera, for example. Um, I don't know. There are a few small things that can be picked up in the replay, but um, I feel like perhaps it's best after the season, even though lots of things can be seen, but I just I just can see that some players wouldn't like it and therefore I think it would be best if it's released after a certain yeah probably after the season. Okay. Yeah, I think so. 
it would be nice. That, uh, do you think that like the continued release? Because it seems like basically all the replays are eventually being released for every tournament at this point. I'm pretty sure, right? Like I am releases always. DreamHack always gets them out eventually, and now with WCS doing it, that's basically it. All replays are out there. Is this going to help foreign pro gaming? Because obviously the Koreans are doing better, always have been. But having so much access to every single thing they're doing, when the games count the most, which is at these tournaments, can the foreign scene make some headway because of that? Mm, I think, uh, like from the product perspective, uh, it's hard to get uh, like steal a build order from a product because the way product works, like you have to understand what are you doing and why are you doing this. Like, what are you expecting from your opponent? So it's hard to steal strategies It's uh, from the pro's perspective. Um, so I think it's it can help, but it's not a, it's such a big factor. It's just about the understanding of the game. I think it helps massively uh, for those willing to study replays. Then I think it will always be good to have more because you have really high-quality games. You can watch games um, and learn things, and it's kind of like play, playing uh, high-level games yourself. You can pick up lots of things that you didn't even think about yourself, and you can learn from the better players, and yeah, I think it will be useful, and uh, for the players that play the tournament themselves, I don't think it's too bad either, because it just forces you to stay on top of your game, and um, yeah, either way, at the highest level, I think, it's not so much about strategies, it's not like there aren't so many secrets in terms of strategy, so it's more about execution at the highest level. So I don't think it's a bad thing, and I think it's only good for um, for lower level players, absolutely. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say how much it's going to help. It probably depends on the individual player, if you like to study stuff like that, or if you just like to uh, play a lot. I think yeah. for Terran, you can't really reach really high level by studying things. I think maybe Protoss would benefit the most from studying replays. That's that's the most strategic race, I feel. With Terran, uh, I think a weakness of foreigner Terrans have always been that the mechanics on Micro are really, really bad compared to Koreans. Mm, so maybe it will help a little bit, but I don't see it doing that much. Okay. Kind of interesting. This So... Once again, we have like different points mm -hmm. of view here, and this might be race-based once again. I'm not <laughs> sure. Do you guys think it's race-based that you have such different points of view? Like, For instance, Bunny, you think that Protoss might be helped the most, but Mana feels like it's more what are your intentions going in, so it's harder to get that out of the replay, whereas Snoot thinks studying the replay is fantastic. <laughs> so it's like we definitely have some different yeah. opinions. Yeah. Like uh, Bunny, you said that it might help protest the most, uh, but um, you, if you study the replays, you might not find a situation you're actually looking for. So like you you can study one strategy, but when you will try to execute it, you will not execute it like as well because opponent is doing something completely else, and protest works in that way. Of course, the other races is is uh, it's uh, similar, but I think protest like. Yeah, when you have different situation, it changes so much because of the unit's yeah. composition. You you must have. Um, recently, I've actually started to talk a lot more with other players than I used to, and I feel like that's helping a lot. Having someone to bounce ideas back and forth mm -hmm. with, and that might also be very useful when watching the replays because there's like these unfamiliar situations. If you have someone to fill in, that's going to help a lot. Um, let's see. Yeah. I don't know. For me personally, I think it's just playing and discussing with other players because you're always looking for the situations that you feel uncomfortable in and how to fix them. And when you're looking at replays in general, you just get the you can't really you just get some situation from the replay that specific situation. So do you guys not. use a lot like uh, watching replays together with other players or do you usually watch it by yourself and like try to figure it out all by yourself? Or you talk together with someone? Mm -hmm. I usually talk together with people, but the only replays I watch with uh, people are they like custom games I practice. Sometimes we watch the replay, discuss what went wrong, what could have been better, stuff like that. And I feel like yeah. it really helps. Like StarCraft is not a game that you can figure out on your own, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. 
mostly mostly solo, but sometimes um, if I have something very special, then I talk to other Zergs about it. So yeah. I have to share Bunny's opinion. Like discussing with other players, like di completely different point of view. It's it it can help. Like it can give you so much other information. Like you haven't even noticed. Like just small things. So I think it's very, very useful to talk to other players. Like solo, you can, of course, like uh, get some information, like very useful. But I think it's just way more information if you talk to, to others during watching the replay because uh, other person can see like, did you see this one? Let's, let's run the replay and see that again, like show you why he did that and stuff like this. Like discussion is is so needed, I think. In, in the foreign scene, for, for example, because in Korean scene, we have a lot of uh, pro houses, for example, and they I'm sure they talk together uh, about the strategies they use, and after the, ga the games, they watch the replays and stuff like that. In foreign scene, well, we watch the replay, we talk, but I don't think we look deep into that. Yeah, It's actually helped me so much recently, playing more custom games instead of just playing ladder all the time. Mm. Like, my TVP was improved so massively much from playing a lot with Grubby and some other players, mainly Grubby, and he gave me a lot of feedback on what to do. And it was uh, the period where I had a really big downtime in TVP where I was just feeling it was like impossible for me to win. And then after I had grinded out so many custom games and discussed so much, I went back on the ladder and like, I think I went 22-2 and two against Protoss. <laughs> so, yeah, it that's the power of the, of the practice and, and discussion. Uh, so, on that on that topic of uh, the custom game versus ladder, how much do each of you do custom game versus ladder? Because I I think custom game is actually better for you overall by like at least a hundred percent. If you have good practice partners, I feel like you're going to learn so much more through customs and repetition. But what do you guys think, and what do you actually do? Uh, I, I think it's like it's hard to get practice partners because we all are opponents in potential tournaments. So it's hard to have like 100% practice versus uh, each other. So that's why we have teams, for example. So uh, in most sports, we have internal practice and we like we talk together about the game. We practice together in custom games. Sometimes like uh, we're let's say I play versus Lucifron and Hasops is observing and talking about the games. We're fixing our mistakes. So we're playing. Quite a lot, but definitely can improve in playing custom games. It's just hard to uh, find a time where both uh, sides have the time to play. Uh, so I think that's like the only reason why I don't play that many custom games, but I still play a lot. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, for me, it's like 50 50. Uh, like recently, I've started to play a lot more custom games with some of the American players too, because they don't want to play in their ladder because it's not very good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they ask for custom games all the time, and I've started to talk with a lot of Terran players, and it's really helpful. Like, I didn't realize how much you could figure out by just talking to other players playing the same race. Because <laughs> like I've been, I was playing solo for so long, so mm. it really helped. Mm. Yeah, I used to play quite a few customs when I was in Korea, but for the most part I actually just ladder, I have to be honest, so that's what I do. Um, okay. But I think customs are very useful to practice specific scenarios, um, because on ladder um, sometimes I get a bit frustrated because I want to p practice a macro game, for example, and then some ladder star comes and t does a 10 pull <laughs> baneling, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> I want to spend my time on something useful. And then, of, of course it's useful, you always need to practice against anything that can kill you, right? Um, but for a specific practice, then um, you always want to play custom games. Like, if you want to say, let's skip this part of the game, and let's go straight to the mid game, let's go straight to the late game, then customs will always be best, because on ladder people do everything to... Some players just want to kill you really fast, <laughs> so you don't always get that late game practice. For example, if you want to work on your control or engagements or whatever. All right, cool, cool. Well, this has been a pretty kick-ass discussion. You guys have anything else? Mm. Anything else to add before we wrap up? I think, like uh, for the ladder, like if you want to polish your mechanics, for example, like it's it's very good. But if you want, as I said, like certain strategy or build order or whatever, it's custom games for sure. Mm. 
I think ladder is very important because you can lose to so many different things. So in order to actually make your builds legitimate, then ladder practice is absolutely necessary, I would say. Can, yeah. I, can mm -hmm. I guess that you don't use a barcode? No, I use barcodes all the time. You do use barcode. Okay. Everyone uses barcode. <laughs> no. Well, some players don't. No. Like I, was, I was talking to TLO and he doesn't because of that kind of what you said, Snoot, where he wants to make sure his builds are legitimate so that even if people are like, well, TLO normally plays like this, that he tries to fight against that by, you know, mm. using his ID instead of a barcode. So I was just guessing. Yeah, it's. I feel like it's kind of the same. Uh, for TLO, it's a bit special because he streams uh, all the time, so yeah. they okay. know it's him anyway. Um, but there are two sides to it. Like, if you use your real uh, name, then they your opponents might try to hard counter you, blind counter you, and do things yeah. like that, which can make the game even more difficult. And that, in return, can be good for you, um, because the level is just going to be higher. And the barcode thing, it's a bit more... Uh, authentic, you know that your opponent most likely is going to use something uh, that he feels comfortable with. It's something very streamlined and standard, for example, like there is no special tailoring of his build. It's just standard straight up versus straight up, for example. Anything can happen. So yeah. I enjoy playing barcode yeah. versus barcode a lot. It's just really nice. Yeah, me too, personally. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to guess what your opponent is going to do. Like you need to be on top of your scouting as well. Like there is no hard counters unless you know the barcode. Mm. I have. So it depends on what you want to practice. Of people tagged or barcodes. Uh, everyone does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys have the lists over in Europe too. Yeah, yeah. Everyone. I know almost everyone all the barcodes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's a bunch of Korean pros that have lists. Like, I heard back when. The barcodes first started, and ST had like the first full list, which feeds into the legend. I love that story. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a pretty kick ass discussion, guys. I've really, truly enjoyed this episode of Meta. So let's wrap it up and do some shout outs. Who do we start with? Let's see. Uh, Snoot. Shout outs. Yes. <laughs> Searching for the sponsors, I can hear that. <laughs> um. <laughs> Wait, I will, I will need time to think. Maybe I'll okay. do something special. Mana, Mana, yeah. don't you touch right. that keyboard. Shout out. Okay, okay. Uh, I would like to thank you for inviting me to the show. I really enjoyed the previous episode. I'm very glad I could be here today having a discussion with you guys. It was very informative. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Mouseports and our sponsors, BenQ, Gale, Razer, Thoratech. So uh, I would like to thank them for the support and well hopefully I can get some results to please you guys cool. Bunny? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to thank you Dan for inviting me onto the show it was fun being here and uh, discussing with you guys and I'd like to give a shout out to my team Copenhagen Wolves and the sponsors Steel Series, Adidas and Complete and thanks to all my uh, Danish friends and all the Danish players for being with me on Skype making ladder less boring Having someone to talk to. <laughs> Shout out to you guys. You know who you are. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And so Snoot, it's the ready? autumn season. Yeah, yeah, it's the autumn season in Norway. So that means we're going to have lots of awesome lands coming up. We're going to try to win them all. So <laughs> my shout out is just to all the Norwegians out there. Because I'm back home in Norway now and it's really awesome. So I just wanted to give everyone in Norway a big shout out. Mm -hmm. And of course to my awesome team Liquid. And their sponsors, Shiny Things, Racer, Twitch, Barracuda, and Need for Seats. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for everything they've done for me, sending me to Korea and all of those things. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, for me, big thanks to you three guys for coming on and everyone for watching. Really been a fantastic episode. I'm quite enjoying uh, the, the European meta doing that, uh, talking to all these other pros that I love just so much after doing a lot of Americans. So, uh, definitely going to be doing a European meta next week as well. Make sure you guys tune in. A uh, big shout out to TT Sports High by Power, my sponsors, and Simpatico. It's at Simpatico TV on Twitter. He's the guy that produces this. He's the one, he's the brains and beauty behind this entire show that makes it so nice. So, once again, thank you guys for coming on, and we will see everyone again next week. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. See you.